Before the one and done rule, many high school phenoms chose the NBA life over college basketball. And one such player was Jonathan Bender, 6'11 star out of Picayune, Mississippi, who was labeled as a can't miss talent. Skills of a point guard, Bender's future looked bright, but injuries slowed him down. And soon after being heralded as a future star, Bender's future looked bleak. But as former teammate Reggie Miller found out, Bender was only beginning to tap his potential. Potential not wrapped in athletic skills, but something far more important. Certain days you feel good, you feel great, right? And it's almost like you're playing a game with yourself. You feel great, and then the next day, how could I feel this bad you know, after I just felt great 24 hours ago? Yeah, I just need the box. You can break the box down, Cap. I don't want my legacy to be the one that got hurt and just fell off. The talk of Pacer people, including Larry Bird and obviously Donnie Walsh, was, boy, how talented this kid is, what a great shooter he is for seven-footer, and if he could just stay healthy, we could have something special. But obviously, being healthy is a major part of it all. Questions were asked, if you're not comfortable now, what are you going to do for the rest of your life? That was the whole thing. Those were the question marks that kept coming up that I had to solve, and I had to answer. I've known you for a while. Mm -hmm. People know that we played together, but mm -hmm. people don't know the whole story. Selected number five overall yeah. by Toronto, uh -huh. and then here comes this 18-year-old yep. Jonathan Bender. What was that like? It was pressure. It felt like a little pressure. I was in a situation where I said, I got to show some potential or do something early. I grew maybe six inches over a summer, Fast forward to the Pacer years, the docs told me, hey, you, were, you wasn't supposed to do anything during those six months. They were supposed to sit you down. Oh, really? The damage started early. A lot of the chipping started early, but nobody knew, you know, nobody knew about that. And these so, are in your knees? These are in my knees. My okay. knees would swell. I would get them drained. I just okay. thought it was normal, right? Fast forward to, you know, year six, had surgery. After that, I come back, and you know me, I'm playing two guard, three guard, I'm 6'11", mm -hmm. 90 degree is my friend. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm chasing you around, you know, you hitting me with that, that funky elbow and then taking off off a pick, man, I got to get 90 degrees. Well, I couldn't get there no more. Right. When I got down in the 90 degrees, I felt like I had a knife carrying with me right in my knee every time I made a short turn. I go into practice, I feel good 15 minutes, and the next 15, 20 minutes, I feel like somebody's stabbing me. It's like you can't predict when it's going to be a terrible time. Mm -hmm. So uh, we decided to take time off. Well, that time turned into four years. Wow. I really wanted to do something successful outside of the, outside of the game. Mm -hmm. And especially once I ran into my injury, that's when the epiphany moment started to come, and I really started to tr kind of put a goal together and put an end game together to go towards. I was just sitting there, I watch, watching people walk one day, and I, I watched how they pick their leg up and put it down, and, and I said, if I can create something that can fit, and fit on a person while they're walking in that gate, I can probably create something that, that, that could work. What I've learned over the two years of rehabbing when I was with Indiana is that muscle activation is everything. I wanted something that I could attach to my body that I could, that would fire my quads, glutes, and my hamstrings and my core all at one time while taking pressure off my knees. So I thought about this band and I took off to the store, and weight belt, ankle braces, duct tape, all that, all the good, all the good funky <laughs> stuff. Put, put this nasty contraption together. And all it, by it, yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. I, I was always tinkering with stuff when I was small anyway. Mm -hmm. But it looked terrible, but it worked. It did exactly what I thought it would do. And from that point on, I would do my normal routine. I was able to go out and actually do drills, sort of basketball type drills. With the device with on. With the device on. And it kept all the pressure on my muscles, kept all my muscles engaged, but it took all the pressure off my knees. Being able to take a person, give them a feeling like they're in a pool, but they're actually here on the ground, it's just amazing that you know God can give me the gift to be able to create something like this to help others. I wanted to make something that was affordable for, for everyone. And, uh, you know, something that can help people with their pain and, and their mobility issues. Jonathan Bender, mm -hmm. the entrepreneur. So, Donnie Walsh gives you the call. Mm -hmm. You go to New York. Obviously, you're, you're much better. You're improved from this device. So much so that he offers you another year, uh -huh. but you turn it down. Yeah. My question to you is, 
with this new product, don't you think you could have advanced it more if you would have continued to play and everyone would have known that this was the device that got me back in the NBA? I felt good, but I also felt like I was leaving my product out there to die. So it had to wait on me to finish doing what I was doing before I can get back in and learn what I really needed to learn to bring it to market. Mm -hmm. So I was caught into in a, in a conflict there, and now we have it. We have made our name in the medical market, which you know the sport market I feel like is a given because I'm, You're a, walking I'm a walking testament. You had a vision, and obviously injuries hampered you, but you had a vision far beyond basketball, mm -hmm. and I think that's a testament of, of hard work and dedication on your end. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say? Uh, I would say. We all have a certain intellectual property that doesn't have a shelf life. I don't know if it's five minutes or five years. All right. Developing that end game and going after it with all you got and not trying to buy it, but actually, you know, put the work into it and uh, do what you have to do to prove yourself worthy of getting what you asked for. What a terrific story, one we are so happy to share here, Stu. Without question, and as I listen to Jonathan Bender and I hear his story, it reminds you that life experience is the best teacher and the success of a businessman is not always wrapped up in a bunch of degrees mm. and you know here's someone that lived it went out and did something about his pain and the results are phenomenal tremendous story this is a tragedy that is winding up having a very positive ending to it all depending on what happens with this device and it can help who knows how many other people I just remember the hours that Larry Bird spent with this young man convinced that he was going to be a star in this league. He had all the tools. Who knew about the problems with his legs? Right, but look at that. Low impact, helping other people. It, again, that's, that's fantastic. Congratulations to Jonathan Bender. Coming up, Nuggets and Pacers on NBA TV. Luis Scola, he has been a starter through nine games, averaging about seven points a game. Or is that Russell Brand?